Hello crocheters, welcome back to Crazy Cool Crochet. In today's project we are working on this really um, crazy cool crochet tunic and it's got a, a really nice border all along the bottom and along the sides. Um, the materials that we'll need, I used Baby B Sweet Delight in grape jelly and it's a number three sport weight so it's uh, nice and lightweight. We'll also need a size G hook or a 4.25 millimeter and two buttons. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Now don't forget, um, do watch the video all the way through before you start. This is, um, I always say this, it's because oftentimes um, as I'm working along, I'll think of a tip or a suggestion as I'm taping and it might be something you could use towards the beginning. So go ahead and watch it all the way through, just in case um, there's some tidbits along the way. And be worked up in a size small. And I will have really simple instructions in the uh, white space down below in the description area that will give you direction on how to make this larger. We are going to start with a chain of 77 which in the interest of time I've already done. If you need help um, with the chain, the foundation chain, um, the beginning stitches, I'm going to leave a little white box up above that you can click and that will take you to the beginning um, tutorial series. Okay, so now we are going to start a double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And then chain one. Then enter another double crochet in the exact same space. The exact same chain. And what we are doing is forming V stitches. And you'll be able to see that better as we go along. So now skip the next two chains and enter a double crochet in the next chain. Chain one, another double crochet in the exact same chain. And you can see that V is looking pretty obvious now. Okay, then skip two. Enter another V stitch in the next chain, which is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the same chain. So keep going all the way across till you get to the last three chains. As I'm working along the row, I want to let you know that this is for a size small and to make larger sizes, if you know how to work in multiples, you will use a multiple of three plus five. And I will go ahead and leave that detail in the white space down below in the description area. You might have to enter or open up where it says show more. Or depending on what device you're using, there it might be a little arrow next to where it says Crazy Cool Crochet or next to the name of this project. All right, we're at the end of that first row. We're at our last three chains. So now we are going to do a double crochet in the last chain. So you're skipping the next two as you have been and one double crochet in the last chain. And then you chain three, turn. Now we'll be entering the V stitches inside the V stitches below. Okay, so do a double crochet in that space of the V-stitch, chain one, 
another double crochet in the same space. And then continue down the row, double crochet in the next V-stitch space, chain one, double crochet in the same space. So you can see you are entering the V-stitches and tap of inside the V-stitches below. Continue all the way across. Now we are at the end of row two. We've done our last V-stitch. Now we're going to enter a double crochet and tap of that turning chain at the end. Okay, so inside the chain. There you go. Chain three turn and then continue. So you will have 24 V stitches across each row. So just keep going with the V stitches inside each V stitch below and you will be making two identical panels. Okay, we will have completed a total of 39 V stitch rows. And it's just a rectangle. So now we will go ahead and work on the ribbing borders on the side and the bottom. Now we are going to work on the ribbing on the edges. So when you finish row 39, do not cut off the yarn. However, do switch over to a smaller hook. I'm using a size E. And you're working on the right side. So row 39 would have ended with you on the right side. And there's that tail from the beginning foundation chain. So this tells you you're on the right side. So now we're going to chain eight. And then we're going to insert a single crochet in each chain. And we're going to start with the second chain from the hook. So skip that first one, start on the next one. And there's number seven. Okay, now we're going to slip stitch into the next two spaces. So the first space is going to be this large opening right here. So slip stitch and then slip stitch into the next space, space which is the small opening right next to it. Now we're going to turn. Normally, I turn this way. For this project, we're going to turn this way. Now we're going to enter a single crochet into the back loop only of the single crochets that you just created. And you're going to have seven, so make sure you're not entering into the slip stitches, only into the single crochets. back loop and seven is that little teeny tiny chain at the end 
and chain one, turn it back around, and now single crochet in each single crochet, back loop only, back loop of that two strand chain, And there's number seven. Now two slip stitches again. So the next opening is that large one. And then the next space, I should say, is that little one next to it. And then turn it this way. And then repeat. Single crochets, back loop only. Six and seven. Chain one, turn this way, and repeat with the single crochets. There's seven. When you start, make sure you're starting in that very first one, which is sometimes hard to see. So if you end up with only six, then you know you probably missed that first one. Okay, so two slip stitches again. Slip stitch in the large space, slip stitch in the small space. And then turn and repeat. So do that all the way down the edge. And you are creating a ribbing along the edge, which is about one and a half inches wide. When you are done with that last row of the side ribbing, go ahead and enter your last slip stitch, and then tie it off, cut off the yarn, and now we're going to work on the other side Exactly the same. Just make sure you're still right side facing you. And insert the yarn in the corner of the other side. Chain one to lock it in. And then do eight chains. And then your single crochets starting in the second chain from the hook. So you end up with seven single crochets, same as the other side. So everything you do here will be exactly the same. Okay, so when you get back, when you're finished with your seventh single crochet, slip stitch into that same first large opening then slip stitch into the next small opening right next to it, the space, and then turn this way and continue, same as the other side. And of course, all the way down the edge. When you are done with that second side of the ribbing, go ahead and tie off the yarn and cut it off and then go to the bottom keeping right side facing you and then attach the yarn in the corner so same as we did on the side this time we're going to okay lock it in with the chain one now we're going to do 16 chains and we're doing the exact same thing, except this one will be a little bit wider. You'll start with 16 chains, and then you'll end up with 15 single crochets. And you will have a bottom border of about 3 inches wide. So then when you get your 16, go ahead and start your single crochet, second chain from the hook. Exactly as before, single crochet all the way down. 
After your 16 single crochets, you will enter the hook in that second space for a slip stitch, and then in the next space for your second slip stitch. So again, we're doing exactly as we did before. You're going to turn and start your single crochets in the back loop again and keep going. Okay, so everything is exactly the same. So now when you come back around, you will slip stitch into the next space and the next until you get back to these big spaces and it'll be the same thing. The only thing I want to question you on, and let me show you what I'm talking about. When you get to these big spaces and the little spaces where you're slip stitching, every now and again you're going to want to just enter the one slip stitch and then turn around and keep going rather than two. And let me show you why. If you enter in every two spaces, it ends up buckling. And you don't want that. You want it to be nice and smooth and flat. So in order to get that look, you don't want to go you don't want to skip two. You don't want to do two slip stitches. You only want to do one. I would say about maybe every seven spaces or so. Just do one. So just be watching as you're going along and if it starts to do pucker, then you know to only do one slip stitch instead of two. Now it's time to attach the panels at the shoulders. So take the two panels, place them right sides touching each other so that the wrong side is facing you. Take your tapestry needle with a length of yarn, insert in the corner, and then we'll be using a simple whip stitch. So you'll insert under two strands on each panel. And just go across for about four inches. Of course, it's your preference. If you want a smaller neck opening, then go a little bit further out, maybe four and a half or five. But that's it. Then when you get to the end, just tie it off, leave a tail so that you can weave it in and hide it when you're all done. To attach the button, you want to have the panels right side facing you and sitting next to each other. Now for this design, we are not going to overlap. This is going to be strictly decorative. And we want to have the panels side by side. And you are going to take one of the holes, assuming you have a button with just two holes. That would be best for this particular design. Okay, so you're going to, from the back, bring the needle through, leave a tail, then bring it through the buttonhole, Now make sure when you get your buttons that the holes are going to be big enough for the needle to go through. It may not be something that you think about at the time. Okay, then go through the other side. Mine is barely getting through. Okay, then go through the corresponding row in the other panel. Bring it through. And 
as best you can. Then go underneath and tie the two ends to secure it with a good net. Okay, when you are all done, attaching the shoulders and the buttons, you're going to find yourself with a whole bunch of these stragglers, tails. So you want to weave those in. Now, different people have all different methods for doing this. I find it easier for me to just insert the hook in a single strand near the tail bring it through and do that for a few strands wherever it's convenient and of course you only want this in the back don't go through the front so just bring it through after you're a little ways from the edge I like to knot it so I do two chains pull through Squeeze it to form a nice nut. And for extra measure, I usually do that. Take the rest of that tail, go through a couple more strands and knot it again. And that is not going anywhere, even after washing. Okay, so go ahead, clean up all your loose ends, and that's it. You're done. Enjoy.